Hello everyone, this is Sabrina, the editor of Live Through This on creativity and self-destruction. Today I'm going to share with you a panel that we did at Good Vibrations in Berkeley, California on how sex and gender play into some of the contributors' essays. Uh, the contributors joining us are graphic artist and writer Christy C. Rode, Stephanie Howell, who's a performance artist, writer, and fact activist, and sexologist and co-founder of the Center for Sex and Culture, Carol Queen. Uh, the first question I asked the panel was, how does sex play into your essay in the book? So with that, uh, is there anyone that wants to start that off? Is there, maybe even Carol would be the, the well, one. Well, actually, um, I, really wanted to, I really wanted to write about that period of my life, partly because um, this isn't likely to have been a story I would have told in any of the other contexts that I usually write. I usually get asked to do things in these sex-positive anthologies and and um, the, the point of my life that was in some ways the most sex negative, but was certainly the most fearful and frightening about sexuality, wasn't one of the things that I probably would have tackled or would have been appropriate for any of these other places. So when Sabrina talked to me and we were talking about the, the initial shape of what she was envisioning the book to be, it's true, I think I was one of the early people that you talked to because Absolutely. I had just been um, interviewed by her for another project that she did. So she just called me back and she, or, or maybe even you said during the interview, oh, I've got this idea. And I was all like, you must do that idea. That's brilliant. Got to do it. Um, really, all of the other things that I could have written about around self-destruction and other kinds of issues didn't even occur to me. I went right to that losing virginity, I'm going to jump out the window scenario. That was the only thing that I thought that I wanted to explore. But I also wanted to put it in the context of if people know me now, they know that, I mean, I imagine they don't think that there was trauma associated with any of my previous sexual situations, but I wanted really to, to go into that to give a sense of maybe reassurance to people that wherever you start, you can move. That was really what I wanted to put out in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I know that women and young men and pretty much everybody, transgender people, pretty much everybody can have true issues with sexuality. Um, sex can be a source of pain and discomfort and challenge and scariness and all of those things. And none of that has to make it not be something that is a great gift in our lives and something that we can move uh, from those places into places that are a lot more positive and healthy and fruitful and pleasure filled. And, and I wanted to give some sense of the gulf in my world because I know that everybody in this book, as this is part of the idea of this, this panel too, I know that everybody in this book has some sort of steps that they've needed to take, even if they didn't write about sexuality really specifically. Both of you did touch on it more than some of the other writers. Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you actually things. got most of the people who, who wrote about sex at all in their essays. Because yeah. yeah. plenty of people were way too busy grieving the deaths of people and, and yeah. getting sounds like even yeah. higher than you got and, and all of that <laughs> to to go into what sexuality meant for them in their process. So I just thought it would be really interesting to get women who come to spaces of real challenge and figure out how sexuality played into that challenge, but also how it might play in getting us out. Yeah. But, and before we go to the next person, I really want to talk about Carol's piece just for a second in the fact that what was going on, it seemed like in editing these pieces, like, so what was going on? And it was a constantly a pull of like, so but what's the story behind this? And it was just that her, you know, power was the one thing, like sex was the one power, that was the one exciting thing, and if that wasn't gonna be it, if that, if that wasn't amazing, oh my God, I have nothing, you know? And for that, the fact that the, you know, one time, like, well, I don't know about the rest of your life, but that you were like, maybe I should kill myself, was because sex wasn't great. For me, that wasn't my first sexual experience in terms of, like, it didn't hold that thing, but for Carol Queen, who has dedicated her life to, you know, after surviving that, to breaking through the isolation so other people can um, not feel the same terror, the same fear, and the same spiral of what is going on here. You know, that was an interesting thing that actually resonated through the book a lot. A lot of the times, the things, the, the experiences or events that triggered the, the most violent self-reaction, once survived became 
the working and starting point for a lot of these women's right. lives. And maybe that's why it was so terrifying. Right. So that was an interesting thing. But let me let me throw this off to Chris. Well, how about Christine? Um, well, using all kinds of stimulant drugs was always the, what I would fall into after a bunch of traumas I went through in my life. Like I look back at being 16 and like family bullshit and like body image bullshit. Just like all this, every trauma I had like that was my response. Oh, I'm just gonna do a bunch of speed and everything will be awesome and then I can just move on to the next chapter. And I'll, and I'll move on really fast. <laughs> um, but I was, I was in this relationship for a while, and it was, it was actually the time I was the most clean drug-wise. But it was horrible and manipulative, and like it just kind of destroyed my relationship with my body, and I just stopped having sex that involved any kind of vaginal penetration for years. And, you know, I just kind of dismissed it and I was like, oh, whatever, that was just a shitty relationship. And like, I just ignored the effect for a very long time. And then um, eventually, like when I started re, eventually like a bunch of bullshit happened. Like two friends died, like I moved to New York to get away from everything and then like, more bullshit happened. Like, it was just a crappy time period, and it was a time of just like being like, okay, what the fuck am I gonna do with my life now that I'm not, I don't wanna like travel around and be aimless and like get drunk all the time and only care about, you know, hanging out. And I need to start caring about myself and my relationship with myself, specifically my sexual relationship, which I felt was the most damaged and that whole process of of healing involved so much blow I was just like oh the only you know like it was like the only way to connect with people sexually I have to be fucked up because otherwise I don't really have that confidence to like be physical with people and like be confident. I was, you know, I was physical with people without drugs, but I, it was always just like this very like, I'm doing it because I should. Like I'm doing it because, oh, let's try it out, let's see how it feels, because I'm, you know, I'm young, I'm like 21, I should be having sex with people. And, but the times where it felt like really magnificent was when I was on stimulant drugs, so it was like, oh, this is, this is the answer to like, re-establishing a relationship with my sexual self um, and you know it's it's such a like sh messy timeline that's why I didn't write the story as this like chronological thing but I'm working on this novel that touches on all this so if you can wait six months <laughs> you'll hear all about it but yeah I mean eventually it was like this process of like getting off the drug and reconnecting like getting myself to reconnect and like what I bought this book um, and I had a really great time with it and like this book was like the anti-coke <laughs> um, <laughs> I bought it here actually not this one but the one in San Francisco um, but no it was just like like that sexuality was one of the the larger like dealing with friends deaths was also a big thing but it's like, it was the most like personal thing that I just, that the whole healing process involved a lot of destructive behavior. And one thing again, having, the, you know, just these three women, again, there, there's a 20 women that are, have their stories in this piece, but having, uh, I, I do lectures on uh, the themes that are in this book right now, and a, the main one that came up is isolation, which always I will sort of point to Carol's piece with, but then Christie's was dealing with also isolation, but then you know connecting through people and that false connection, which um, it, it just was an interesting theme that I sort of would throw at, at you. Um, so either way, Stephanie, how about how about you? Is there?